Welcome back. Jumping into our first discussion for this Monday morning, and uh, we have been looking forward to this conversation as well so since last week. Of course, uh, I think all of Belize is aware now that uh, there was a historic moment where five former foreign ministers signed on to a declaration showing or explaining why they support a yes vote to the ICJ. And one of those former foreign ministers was Lisa Showman, and she is here with us this morning to discuss it more. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I've been looking forward to this as well. I think there was a hope that we could have done it the morning after. It didn't quite work yeah. out. But I'm here, and but, I'm happy to be here. But we get to have a fresh start on a Monday morning yes. and getting all the I information know. about it. Yes. So, Lisa, let's let's just jump into it here. Um, there's been quite a bit of a reaction to the signing of the declaration. Yes. But even more so, there's been a larger reaction about your involvement in the declaration. <laughs> um, and and you know, I think that that is a fact, for the simple fact that. One year ago, you expressed mm -hmm. a different opinion than you did on that stage mm -hmm. on Wednesday. On the show, you said that you support a no vote for now with Stick certain up in. stipulations Stick up in, in place. I, ne I never said that. I said mm -hmm. that we should not be going to a referendum mm -hmm. until these minimums are met. Mm -hmm. I've never said I wouldn't support going to the ICJ. And I think that has to be said clearly mm -hmm. because there are two distinct positions. So at that point in time, it was late 2016, mm -hmm. and what I stated was we should not be going to a referendum until we have a SARS-2 protocol in place, until there is a full re-registration exercise, until we have bipartisanship, and there were other things that I mentioned. Do you believe well, those, that yes. those requirements, if I may, have been satisfied? No, they well, have not all been. Uh -huh. Some of them, for instance, the re-registration exercise has now occurred. But here's the thing, Isani. You are not at a stage at which you're talking about what should and should not happen in terms of the referendum. The referendum is a reality. My opinions and views notwithstanding, however strongly I hold them or held them, the referendum is going to occur. So when you are faced with something that is a certainty, you then have to deal with what you have in front of you and all your protestations to the contrary or what you would like to see or not see is then moot. I'm not saying that some of these things can't still occur. For instance, I'm happy to say that there has been now some move towards bipartisanship. And I've always felt strongly about that. Well, I, I want to yes. touch on that, but sure. I'll come back to it because I have to be able to clarify. Yes. Uh, we gave, a, we gave a, a timeline last week and right. I went back, I checked the tapes. You were actually on the show the day after the Guatemalan referendum um, mm -hmm. right here on Open Your Eyes. Yes. And you did say no to the ICJ if these particular stipulations were not met. Okay. My question is, what prompted you mm -hmm. beyond the, the, the date being set? Because the date was imminent for the end of 2018. Yes. What prompted you to shift from saying these particular uh, stipulations must be met to it's OK, we can go without them being I've met? I've never said it's OK, first of all. So, but you understand this implication of you signing on to the declaration yes. is now saying yes. it's no longer and if essential. You look, no, 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 no. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. I still think it's essential for us to have a sars tune protocol. Mm -hmm. Whether we will have it or we won't have it before we go to the ICJ is not going to affect the fact that we will have a referendum. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what this declaration for me is, is very carefully saying these are the reasons why these persons believe that we urge a yes in the referendum. Uh -huh. It does not say that these things are not essential, nor do I believe that it's not necessary or essential. Uh -huh. In fact, I'll go further. There are some things that Eamon Courtney points out that I also think are important, and they are things like amending the Maritime Areas Act mm -hmm. in that clause that has to do 
with reserving ourselves to three miles in the deep south. That's one of the things that should be done. I agree with him that we should have regulations. I agree with him that those um, regulations need to be done before the referendum occurs. What the legal effect of them not happening before is I think something I haven't made up my mind yet, and that's okay too. In terms of its being binding, I believe it has to be binding, clearly. And whether we legislate that or not, the government that doesn't regard that as binding for that time being, it's not for time immemorial, clearly. The government that doesn't regard that as being binding until or unless the people of Belize change that in another <coughs> referendum is a government that has lost its moral mandate. So let's be clear about that. Mm -hmm. I, um, I think that one of the things that as Belizeans we tend to do is to hold positions to be sacred and unchangeable. I think it is critical to separate your principles from your position when faced with different facts. My principles are unchanged. Territorial integrity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and at the moment until I have been shown otherwise and I have not seen this otherwise in the last 18 years. The ICJ still looks to be the best possible mechanism for a resolution. Now, everyone has an opinion on this matter. Sure. And everyone should. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But your role is different because you were yes. a former foreign minister, because you have been on the negotiating team. That's the bigger one. Because you led the process. Yeah. I've been there. Since as, a part, as a part of the yes. bipartisan committee, as yes. the representative for the, for the opposition. Right. And so we have seen your own shifts in your views sure. as the time has gone by. Mm -hmm. As an advocate, when mm -hmm. the People's United Party was in power, uh, continuing in the process as a part of the bipartisan negotiating team. Right. And I believe it was when the amendment was signed to the compromise that really the opposition party pulled out. Of the process. There, was a, there was a pull out before then, Marlene, and I will remind because I mm -hmm. remember the timeline very carefully. One of the things was that there was an agreement with Guatemala to draft 14 bilateral agreements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I was invited to be a part of that drafting process. The leader of the opposition made it very clear at the time, Francis Fonseca made it clear that the conditionality for my attending and participating was that these agreements would be brought to the people of Belize before they were signed. Not only were they not, but additionally, those agreements were signed without any opposition participation at all. And then it was after that, some months after, in 2015, mm -hmm. and after the incident with the Dore, you remember that infamous incident, that then there was a situation where going ahead by unilaterally, the government of Belize, without getting the agreement of the opposition, decided to delink the processes. In other words, agree with Guatemala that you can go ahead and do your own thing. Mm -hmm. I've never been a fan of that. Have a separate that. date for the referendum. I have never been a fan of that. I spoke against it when it occurred. Mm -hmm. I can still you reiterate think your, your your sure. objection to it? From the very beginning, when the idea of holding referenda was floated, and this had to be back before 2008, before the actual signing of the special agreement, mm -hmm. it was discussed mm -hmm. extensively and agreed that what you didn't want is two things. One, that this be a part of anybody's political football, mm -hmm. and two, that the opinion of people in Belize and the opinion of people in Guatemala shouldn't cross each other. In other words, we should get that result on the same day, same question, and, make and decision it on not the same influence day. it one way or another. And that didn't occur. Mm -hmm. So when it doesn't occur and they hold their own referendum, obviously, I had a very strong reaction to it, and I still do. I actually think it's amazing that such a small number of people turned out. Mm -hmm. They voted yes, but a small number of people turned out. And what that has always said to me is that Guatemalans are less 
interested do you think the conversation would, would have been different in belize leading up to a referendum had it been on the same day i think so but obviously we didn't get a chance yeah. to prove that so that's hard to see but my opinion is yes i think it would have been but <coughs> let, let me go back uh, to mm -hmm. to what i was originally asking which is if, if we move away from detailing the semantics yes from the public perception you're seen as going from someone who promoted a yes to the icj to a no to the icj i have never no to a yes i'm, to the I'm ICJ. going to repeat this i no, know you I'm say saying from the public perception yeah. because you okay fair enough fair enough and the public is entitled to their perception i don't mm -hmm. argue that at all mm -hmm. but i think it is important that it be understood that i've never said no to the icj i have said that i didn't believe that we should be going to a referendum until we address these things at a minimum. Mm -hmm. Now, you tell me that I did say no to the ICJ in a tape. I would have to review that. My recollection is that what I said was we shouldn't be going to a referendum. No to a referendum until the following things are met at a minimum. Now, that's something we have been hearing sure. from representatives of the sure. opposition. Postpone the yes. referendum. And, and again, that is a view. I don't share the view. Why don't I share the view? I don't share the view because I'm going to tell you a story. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, George Price will be 100. His, his birthday is tomorrow, January 15. He will have been 100 years old. He was born in 1919. One of the things that Mr. Price was faced with was a lot of clamor around the time when we were looking to go to independence. If you recall, we had this famous United Nations resolution, which nobody voted against historically for the first time. And then it was, okay, so now we have to look towards going to independence. Even before then and after that, leading up to almost September 21st, there were people saying, don't do this. Postpone independence. Get there was a, defense, a lot of fear. Get a defense guarantee first, mm -hmm. or Guatemala will roll over the border they're going to take us by force, and we will have no defense guarantee. True, I recall that, and I, I learned it from Mr. Vernon's very nice little book, he reminded me again, that General Omar Torrijos had promised to send a thousand troops in case of a problem. I think that was largely symbolic. By the time they got here, if there was any show of force, it may have been over. The point is this, Mr. Price, Notwithstanding the fact that there was widespread criticism and widespread praise, never let any of it go to his head. And what he focused on was the important thing ahead of us, going to independence. Had Mr. Price given in to the fear, had Mr. Price said, look, the situation is this, I don't know what to do with that, people are telling me yes, people are telling me no, we may not be independent today or our independence may have been postponed. There will never be a perfect time to do anything. However, what there is are these rare moments in time where the stars line up and or the conditions are favorable for doing certain things. And I think it is critical to recognize those moments and to seize them. This is where I am right now right now we have a signed special agreement with guatemala mm -hmm. we have a date for our own referenda we know already what it is that guatemala is claiming in terms of that we have to assume that it is everything and if it isn't everything then we know how to work from there we've gotten sound legal opinions and we know the moment in history that we are living mm -hmm. In view of all of that, the assessment has to be, what is my reaction to it? And it isn't, you know, Marlene, that my opinion is more important than anybody else's because I was foreign minister or I was this or I was that. Everybody's opinion is equally important to making up their own minds about how they are going to vote. I don't think there's any opinion that is more important. I think people are looking for persons who can help to keep them informed on an issue. I'm and very people aware are very of that. I have, have followed yeah. you online, yeah. on your different media appearances, to understand how you put forward Correct. 
uh, whatever position you have. Mm -hmm. You very clearly said this is where you are right now. Yes. Does that mean that if they're changing conditions that there may be a shift from what you have signed on to on Wednesday? No. That is a principle. This is what I say to you that there's a difference between principles and opinions or positions. Mm -hmm. Those advocate, that, that declaration advocates certain principles that I hold and have held for a very long time. What changes is the circumstances surrounding the world. Mm -hmm. You'd be an idiot if you didn't change how you react to anything depending on what the circumstances are. I make no apology about that. I don't think Belizeans want leaders that are so inflexible that you can't recognize where you are. When I say everybody's opinion is important, I mean everybody's opinion is important to making up their own yeah. minds, and it is. That opinion can be informed by listening to me, by listening to you, by listening to Isani, but at the mythical end of the day, when you step up to that polling station, and I really hope, Regardless of whether you vote yes or no, you will vote. Mm -hmm. When you step up, it is your decision and your decision alone that counts. Let now, me ask a question here quickly. And <clears throat> I hope I'm not digressing too, oh, no, too no. much from where you guys are. We're good. One of the things that I've pondered since Wednesday, mm -hmm. um, you're a member of the People's United Party. I think so. I still <laughs> am, yes. So too <clears throat> is... Said Musa. Yes. And the four of you guys are from the PUP. Yes. How do you divorce party? Very easily. From for politics. The position that you've taken as very, a former foreign minister. Very easily. This position that I hold, mm -hmm. this, these principles that I hold, I have held even before I stepped out into national service as an ambassador. Mm -hmm. And I have always been very clear that the most important principle when it comes to the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Belize is that the national interest is above any party. On um, Wednesday when we made the declaration, I paid tribute to two men and mm -hmm. I failed to pay tribute to one. Mm -hmm. That one is the Right Honorable George Cadle Price, the father of our nation. This man had a singular vision that he held, like I said, in spite of the stoning and attempted crucifixion, in spite of the adulation and the praise, and it was that we had to move towards managing our own destiny and we had to do so with a territory that was intact. He, in fact, achieved that. That has always been my guiding star. I had no difficulty joining this declaration even from the inception. I want to talk a little bit about that because when this was thought of, it was thought of, can we make a joint statement to Belizeans that will correct some of the misinformation out there or address it, that will also show very clearly that this is a national matter. We had gotten <coughs> away did from you hesitate at all when you were asked I didn't. last year? I didn't, because I was confident that we would find a formula of words. Mm -hmm. My recollection was is... Was there anything you did not want in the declaration? Oh, of course. That you would not put your name to it? We started out with 2,000 and change words. We ended up with 513. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At seven We points. started out in October. We, I think, finalized it at the end of the year. So there were not only words that I didn't want, Ideas that I felt were what were those safe, ideas? Confusing. I'm not going to repeat them simply mm -hmm. because I think what is important was the points of concordance and not the points of discordance. And I think it would be unfair to those who participated in the process. Mm -hmm. My recollection is that when Senator Amon Courtney was asked to participate, and he confirms this on the news, his first reaction was no. Mm -hmm. I think his exact words were, hell no. So in other words, he didn't know any formula. Mm -hmm. No words had been suggested at that point. Just in principle, he didn't want to. Mm -hmm. For whatever his reasons are, I think those that has to be respected. That's his right. What but I had faith, and I still have faith, that politics aside, we can manage this thing as Belizeans 
and as Belizeans before any political party to answer your question. Lisa, you have been most critical of our current foreign, uh, form, uh, foreign minister. Absolutely. And one of the things you had stated several times in different mediums yes. was that he should not be leading this process. I've Why said that. was he not involved in the signing of this declaration as yes. the longest serving foreign <laughs> minister in this country? I know, country? right? I know. Um, he's not involved for one very simple reason. He is not a former oh, foreign oh. minister. This was meant to be two but things. But it could have been former and hear, current. Hear me, yes. But that's not the way it worked out. I think there were strong feelings about his participation on both sides mm -hmm. of the political aisle. And his presence, I think, would have been, a, in my opinion, a distraction to the central message. Mm -hmm. I believe that what is important is that you've gotten a message on a bipartisan level from people who have been intimately involved in the process mm -hmm. since this phase of the beginning because remember there have been several cycles you know mm -hmm. there was a cycle that began for instance in 1990 that ended somewhere around 96 97 and then the process went dormant for several years and didn't really resurge until 1999 ish and I joined it in 2000 so I'm saying to you, you have, you have, what do you have here? People who have been intimately involved, people who have spoken to the legal experts in the matter, people who have sat across the table from Guatemala and eyeballed them, people who know what the difficulties and the challenges are and what it is that we need to be concerned about and looking at when making up our minds about how we move forward. And there's a couple of things I agree with Eamon with. Mm -hmm. For instance, I feel very strongly, as he does, that Belizeans need to see who the legal team is that's going to take us. I've said this to the Prime Minister. I think he He's should bring He's proposing a, a freeze of the attempt to resolve. And I want to discuss that, but let me finish the point, which is that I think Belizeans deserve to know who are the legal experts taking us and what it is that they feel about the chances of, because remember going to the ICJ is a sub-specialization of law, you know. Mm -hmm. Nobody here has ever argued at that level of organization. It's not that we can't, it's that we don't. Mm -hmm. And so therefore what you want are people who have experience in this type of work. You're not Taekwondo GP if you are to face cancer. Yeah. Lovely to have the GP's advice and, and opinion. And but a general practitioner may be fully capable of doing other things. Yes. But, but <laughs> let, me, let me come back to one of the issues mm -hmm. because you have pointed out, I think, kind of the, the explanation of the signing of the declaration has been pretty much similar across the board, which is a sign of unity, a sign of bipartisanship. But can it really be called a bipartisan declaration if the PUP has clearly separated themselves from the actions mm -hmm. of yourself, Right, Honorable uh, Said Musa, uh, Godfrey Smith, and Asad Shoman. May I? The party leader has given an opinion. My understanding is that that has not been ratified by either the Central Party Council mm -hmm. or the National Convention, both of whom are the in succession two organs that would have to state what the party's position is. Regardless of what the PUP thinks or doesn't think my status within the party is, whether they want to claim me or not, and the same with Godfrey Smith, and the same with Assad, the point is that Said Musa is a sitting parliamentarian in good standing with the party as far as I know, immediate past, two immediates, not immediate, past party leader, okay, past prime minister. And I think the biggest get for me is that this man could put aside any and all of the personal animus that was directed at him to share a podium with his perhaps greatest political opponent mm -hmm. and for all of the things that Prime Minister, had, Prime Minister Dean Barrow has heard Prime Minister Said Musa say about him, mm -hmm. he was also able to do the same. Well, we've heard so the responses that is critical. From, from both you and, mm -hmm. and uh, Right Honorable Said Musa, but clearly 
what we've seen from that press mm -hmm. release that came out the day before the declaration. Yes. Um, what we've seen with the alliance that has been formed in the South. Yes. The writing on the wall seems to be saying that the PUP may very well support a no position. It may. And they have disassociated themselves from your actions. So That's my fine. question is, can it be called a bipartisan declaration or is it yeah. a semblance of a G7, oh, the rogue four who went out and did something separate from we, the party? We could spin it any way we like and okay. look at it any way we want. These are the facts, that these are people who do not share political views in common in terms of partisan views. And we still were able <coughs> to put that aside and to put the country first. I think that is an historic show mm -hmm. of what is possible from people who people consider to be leaders as to the way forward. This, the times that, I've said it before, the times that we have always worked and negotiated and confronted the unfounded Guatemala claim most effectively have always been when we have done so, putting aside partisan views and taking it from a non-partisan view. So maybe you don't want to say bipartisan, that's fine. You can say non-partisan because that's probably really more what it is. Yeah. It's a non-partisan so view. <coughs> one, one second. I think what sure. we should do, because we do have a second segment to discuss. Yes. It. So before we go any deeper, <laughs> let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be continuing the conversation with former Foreign Minister Lisa <coughs> Shoman. So stay tuned. When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. Channel 5 introduces The Daily Obituaries. The Daily Obituaries will broadcast all death and funeral announcements and memorials to honor your loved one's life and memories. The Daily Obituaries airs on Channel 5 prior to the evening newscast with subsequent repeats at 10 p.m. and 12 noon the following day. It will also be placed online on our social media platforms, all for a standard package fee. Celebrate their lives and memories with Channel 5's daily obituaries. Honor in life and reverence in death. And welcome back to the second half of a spirited conversation we're having with Lisa Schumann on the matter of the declaration that was signed last Wednesday and her position in all of this. Prior to the commercial break, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask a question. And again, it's something that I've been looking at um, for quite some time and I'm glad that I have the opportunity to ask now. There is the idea of this bipartisan approach, but what I'm kind of lost on is mm -hmm. the fact that when you look at where the People's United Party is currently, the leadership and the position that, that the party has taken, there still doesn't seem to be a solid position, yes or no. And when you listen to the party leader, he's still on a listening tour. And mm -hmm. we're only, we're less than three months away from the yes. actual referendum date. Explain that to me from your point of Let view. Let me preface any comment I'm going to make mm -hmm. by repeating something that the party leader said. I do not speak Understood. on behalf of the PUP. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, I'm still a PUP member. Mm -hmm. I still share the views politically of the People's United Party. But the party leader has given something that is very much his own view, mm -hmm. because as I understand it, this hasn't gone to a central party council. It hasn't gone to a national convention. And my understanding was that this would be left up to people's consciences mm -hmm. as to how they would vote. Because let me be very clear, no matter what P I am, no party can tell me how to vote on this issue. This is very much an issue that is going to be left up to each and every individual Belizean as to how they're going to vote. I promise you that there are UDPs that will vote no. Mm -hmm. I promise you that there are PUPs that will vote yes. I promise you that there are people who are aligned to no party mm -hmm. 
who are either going to vote or not going to vote and will make up their mind if they go to vote, what that vote will be. I would urge everybody, please, no matter how you're going to vote, please go to vote. It's critical. That's the most important thing. So, you know, the party leader can say what he likes. He's held the position that yes to the ICJ. He said he has not said no to the ICJ. He said, I'm listening and the party is saying no, and I think that's where we're going. I wouldn't put it any higher than that. How involved do you plan to be in the education <laughs> campaign? I've always been involved in the education campaign, even when there wasn't one, which means that I've always been willing to give my opinion, my views. Uh, I go to many places when I'm invited to talk about this. Sometimes I can't because of time pressure, work pressure, but I'm always willing to be a part of any process that educates Belizeans as to what's happening. In fact, the morning after the declaration, the during uh, just immediately after the declaration, I did some interviews with media. The morning after, I was on the Love Morning Show. The morning before, I spoke to St. Catharines. I have always been involved. So for those who think that there was a one-day circus stunt mm -hmm. and that was it, this lady intends to be very involved in an education campaign moving forward because I think it is important for people to figure out where they want to. But let's, let's, let's get a better understanding mm -hmm. of what this involvement means. Sure. We've all seen how yes. the public forums have played out right. mm -hmm. um, when there is a debate of mm -hmm. both positions. Will Hold you on, you talking about the recent one that was done by UB, the recent forum? There have been several all okay, over the country. Right, yeah. right. That was yeah. actually done by UB in conjunction with the no. chamber, I think. The we last iteration with support so. from the referendum unit. And the, so. and the yeah. set, the NGOs were also right, involved right, there right. as the well. Right, 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 the NGO center, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. But my point is we've seen mm -hmm. how it's deteriorated into name calling. Very yeah. much what we see in... in, in social uh, media. In social Same media, thing. in our yes. House of Representatives, yes. you know. Yes. There seems to be a, a lack of capacity to get a focused conversation on the issues. Miss Lady, and, we got a problem to, with civility, and period. And I want to, we have a problem with civility. Mm -hmm. But are you going to go to a forum, a presentation, to tell people to vote yes I, and why the no's are wrong? That's I, all we've been seeing. I have never gone to any forum to tell people that this is how they must vote. Mm -hmm. I've said this is my view. You're free to share it or not share it. I have accepted a challenge on <coughs> air from the Belize Peace Movement, and I'm waiting for them to say when they're ready to discuss with them on air their views as to no and my views as to yes. I'm not ramming anything down anyone's throat. I have no capacity to do that. You know that I'm not called. interested in the name calling. I have been called every name from traitor, traitor to dog mm -hmm. to treasonous mm -hmm. to sell out the Bembe. country mm -hmm. to but Bembe <laughs> to troublemaker and a few that I have made up myself. Mm -hmm. but. And it doesn't faze me because whatever your view of me personally, what yeah. interests me more mm -hmm. is what is your view of what we need to do mm -hmm. or not do. The reason I ask that question specifically is because you have spoken on the fact that the education campaign being led by the government right. has been partial. Yes. And this is still a criticism we mm -hmm. still hear from many different corners, mm -hmm. including those who are pushing for a no vote. Sure. I think it's clear to know that the referendum unit, as far as I know the unit in government, I think has done a decent job of putting the idea that you must go to a vote. Mm -hmm. That public education campaign. Mm -hmm. I know... There have been billboards with yes, vote yes. And I haven't seen them, but I'll take your word for it, okay? I know that the billboards say yes, no, ICJ vote, go to vote, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to you, even if there are billboards There's that one with a media personality okay. that clearly Lovely. says yes. And that's his there right. But that's his right. Where is he say, He's, this is my land, let's end this dispute. It doesn't say yes. Voting no is not ending the dispute. You're free to interpret it how you like. This is this gentleman's view, mm -hmm. and he has every right to say it. I have said over and over, you know, Every time I'm asked, the people who say no have a right to say no. 
They have a right to give their views. It doesn't mean that I'm going to accept those views, but I defend their right to promote that view. Let me ask you this, Lisa. Yes. What happens on the day after in respect uh -huh. of your involvement? Because what happens on the day after? Yeah, I don't expect, yes, I don't expect to shut up. If the, this goes either way, right? This goes either if it, way. What if happens we vote no, day? If we vote no, mm -hmm. we have work to do. Nothing changes in terms of having work to do. Either way, we have work to do. Because if it is a no, we then have to figure out a way until we can take this to a referendum in the future again. What is it that we do? How do we live with this neighbor who is determined to do certain things? Because let me be very clear, there is a cost to doing nothing. Just look at Venezuela and Guyana and understand there is a cost because the world keeps moving. One of my fears, and this kept me up at night and still does in some occasions, when I start thinking that the way the Motagua Valley drains into the corner of that sea that we have with Guatemala, we're in this sea, mm -hmm. okay? The way the Motagua Valley drains, all the geologists tell us that that is a clear signal that there is significant oil deposits in an area that would involve not only Belize, but Honduras and Guatemala. And unless we get it right in terms of our territorial integrity, there will be difficulties with that. It is no surprise to me that Guyana voted against Venezuela in the OES um, resolution that was just held. Because they have territorial they have questions at heart. Right? Let, let me give you an opportunity then the kind to, of to talk about, about me because I didn't watch Jimmy Morales, the behavior we. Okay. And he needs a distraction from what's happening with his, his investigation. Traditionally, they have needed a distraction, but it is more than that. If the country is going to devolve in a certain way, at least let us understand where we are headed in terms of the relationship. So since you are saying that you are mm -hmm. a part of the education campaign, or you intend to be a, a part of those who educate on why I've yes is a good stopped. vote. Let me, let me just say, stopped. let's address what have been some of the mm -hmm. alternatives that have been put forward. Sure. So we've heard quite a bit from people saying no, and mm -hmm. substantially what they say is no, we're not ready, no, we won't win, um, but very few alternatives. Yes. Uh, the alternative put forward uh, by David Gibson has been the advisory opinion right. at the ICG. Right. Why is that not an avenue Okay, that we, can we address that very clearly in the declaration. Mm -hmm. And when David raised it many years ago, it was carefully studied. And not only that, it was taken to our legal advisors to say, is this a good idea? Okay. They gave us a very learned legal explanation as to what all the ramifications were. One of the things is that it isn't binding, number one. Number two, you can't take it to the Security Council. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number three is you don't need Guatemala's leave to do that. You can do it on your own. So that's one virtue for it. We don't got to worry about that. But number four, and most critical, is what is the practical ramification of that if you do it? Okay? One of the practical ramifications that we look at is because of its non-binding nature and its non-compelability in terms of the Security Council. Countries who were knocking on the door with us, when we started out this internationalization campaign in the 70s, when we were knocking on the doors at the UN. It was us, it was East Timor, it was Palestine, and a country that nobody over 30 has ever heard of called the Western Sahara. Mm -hmm. Of those people who got their independence with territorial integrity intact, Belize and East Timor, which is now known as Timor Leste. Okay, so Palestine, was bedeviled by looking for the perfect solution, never took this thing any further, went to an advisory opinion, and there have been advisory opinions upon advisory opinions that Israel changed. ignores with mm -hmm. impunity. Because it's not binding. With impunity, and not only that, they have gone on a very aggressive campaign that has meant land grab after land grab, after land grab, and nobody has thus far been able to prevent Israel from doing that. In addition, the Western Sahara disappeared completely as a state. It used to be also called the Spanish Sahara. Mm -hmm. It was a colony of Spain formerly. Disappeared because one day 
Morocco simply lined up its citizens on the border and said, see over there, that empty, go for it. We are occupied this. And they, in an historic move called the Green March, marched into the Western Sahara and took over. Why do I say that? Whether it is that the Guatemalan government actively encourages its citizens to come here, which I don't say it is, but if they do, whether it is that they turn a blind eye, or whether it is that people simply come seeking opportunity and land because of the pressures, the fact remains that Petén in the 70s that only had about 70 or 80,000 people now counts its population in the millions. Their geography has changed in terms of the topography, mm -hmm. in terms of yeah. the forestation. We've all seen the, right. the images. You've all Chicago. seen but, that. But let me, let I mean, I'll tell you only that the pressure they come, that then they come. Mm -hmm. but, so, so understanding that it's not binding, and I think yeah. th there's been clear communication on that so far. But what it is, is a safety mechanism for Belize. The, the real fear... And what is a safety mechanism? Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. So the real fear in going to the ICG is that it's binding. So if there is even a kilometer that has to be conceded Can I tell at you? the border, and I was going to say... I think it's 3.3 square miles that we occupy. And I was going to say, because mm -hmm. this has been a part of the message yes. a long time ago, that possibly when the, when the, the western border was surveyed, that it actually we are actually occupying a portion of Guatemala's well, territory. territory. So, if we go mm -hmm. to the ICJ, the ICJ rules in our favor, there is a resurveying of the line, and even those little kilometers mm -hmm. are conceded, it is seen as giving up Belizean territory. This if it's why? more, it's even scarier. So an advisory opinion at least you. gives you an indicator, a litmus test, oh, good to Lord. say we are safe. I've never been an advocate of going for a legal separation if what you want is a divorce. Okay, so let's be clear about this. Mm -hmm. The people who are tied to 8867 as a mantra fail to recognize that 8867 doesn't include our C, mm -hmm. doesn't include our EEZ, mm -hmm. and doesn't include the land territory of all the keys that we're entitled to. So 8867 mm -hmm. is not a magic formula for me because I think Belize is bigger than that. Yeah. Bigger than that. If we are occupying mass. a sliver of Guatemalan land that we should not be occupying, mm -hmm. we are the occupiers. And if you take something where belong to somebody, maybe you have to give it back. But maybe the ICJ also says you've been administering and you've been carrying this on. And this was done by agreement with a set of boundary commissioners. So you stay with it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to you, we rush to look at the worst case scenario all the time, and we should. We have to be aware of it. But you also have to be aware of what it is that you are going to potentially gain. And then you have to make that assessment. Every single legal expert that we have spoken to has said, and this is why we said it in the declaration, we do not see Belize as losing territory. You don't get five lawyers to agree on that just like that, you know. That because took of the a differences of opinion yes. and interpretation. Yes, mm -hmm. and we've taken our time to do that research. I understand that Mr. Courtney has I call other... It outdated. If he has other research, I'd love to see it. No, he is saying that there should be an attempt to get an updated legal that, opinion. But he is also basing his opinion on something which I understand because I didn't oh. watch the interview, he says is based on legal opinion he's been given. I'd love to see that legal opinion. Put it out there because anything and everything that affects this going to the ICJ has to be put out there. For those who were present at the declaration, Ms. Gil Dr. Gilda Lewis stood mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. and made a very important point about how the ICJ rules mm -hmm. and that it has never when faced with a boundary and a boundary treaty, never ruled against that boundary treaty. So for all those who believe that by some slate of hand magic or some formula of words, the 1859 treaty is suspending, nothing could be further from the truth. That is current and binding. So going back to the, the alternatives. Yes. Senator Courtney also put forward the concept of the deep, well, the deep freeze, a yes. postponement of the referendum, a disjoint decision that 
uh, an attempt at resolving this issue for, I think he said, 25 years. Yes. And work on building bilateral relations. Right. Except that, you know, we're, we've been working on building bilateral relations since 1992. And that's been on again, off again. Mm -hmm. He spoke about the 14 agreements. Some mm -hmm. of those are actually in force. Mm -hmm. Okay. The deep freeze. He says he advocated for this all along. My recollection is that he once raised the issue in a forum. I don't have a recollection that he was advocating for this all along, but let's take him at his word that he was. When I heard him advocate it, it was putting it in a deep freeze for 50 years mm -hmm. until a generation had passed. That's a couple of mm -hmm. generations, but let that mm -hmm. be. I understand that, but Marlene, what that is going to mean is that in the meantime, we're supposed to get Guatemala that everybody says won't agree to anything and is a killer of serial agreements. Somehow, we're supposed to get them to a, the table to agree to a defense, let mm -hmm. me finish, mm -hmm. a defense agreement that we will not aggress each other. Mm -hmm. If these people can't give up a claim, mm -hmm. you really think they're going to sign such an agreement? That's a big if. They have already signed the special agreement, which, by the way, Eamon Courtney was a part of drafting that agreement. Mm -hmm. And I don't recall him speaking out against the language in there. Lisa, let's look the, at the urgency. So the what it says is you have something binding. You have something on the table. Mm -hmm. Before you start, grab off a lot of things. When not a day, mm -hmm. Make we deal with web depth on the table, man. Well, let's look at the urgency of this situation. Yes. We're, we're, we're suggesting that if it's placed in a deep freeze for 50 years, that would or be... Or 25 years. Yeah. yeah. Either way we look at it, perhaps we won't be around. We won't be around. Time. I won't right. be around. But then we'd be leaving Who it... Who wants to listen to me when I'm 80? <laughs> kicking. If I, if I last that long. I don't know about that. I hear you, but... Yeah. Essentially, what we would be doing then is Kicking leaving the can down exactly. The road. And I don't know that I want my children to have to, to face that. You want down to know? You, can me, I tell it. tales no. out of school now. Mm -hmm. You want to know what was <clears> one <throat> of my biggest concerns in drafting this thing? Because me never jump up and say no before I never see the language. I said yes. Let's look at what it's going to be. One of my biggest things was that we not saddle our children with our inaction. That we not burden our children because we were afraid to act or because we were so saddled with fear that we made the good be an enemy of the perfect. I think it's critical to know that when you have a plate of food in front of you, you focus on what is on that plate. Would I prefer steak? Sure, I prefer steak. Would I prefer lobster? Yes, but we got rice and beans mm -hmm. and we got stewed chicken. And we got potato salad. Make we deal with that now. That's what we have in front of us. Instead of saying yes, but if we wait a little bit longer, we may get stuffings, we may mm -hmm. get cranberries, we may get turkey, we may get mm -hmm. what we have in front of us is what we're faced to deal with. And whether Belizeans decide to eat the plate of food or not, the situation with Guatemala still needs to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. So I agree with Amon when he says that there will still be certain things happening. What we disagree on is the effect of those things and this straightforward view that once you're locked into an ICJ process, if we decide to go there, there will be a certain amount of worldwide political pressure that will come down on these people if they continue to aggress in the way that they have. Me. I am one of those people that has said clearly to the Prime Minister, as has Said Musa, that we still want to see Asar Stone Protocol. The Prime Minister has said, I want to see it too. But until we get there, we have to figure out what it is that we're doing right now. I so what is the urgency? The urgency is that you can't not act. Mm -hmm. You cannot not act that doing nothing has a cost. I want to hear what, all, I've heard what Senator Courtney says. I thank him for at least trying to articulate a position that is different, that if we don't go no, this is what's going to happen. And I haven't heard him say, 
no to the ICJ you know in the end he did <laughs> in the end Hold on. He, he was held to a position and he said if none he of said, these I are met not, if none of I these are met I am not going to advocate going to the ICJ he did not say and he has never said that yeah. the ICJ is not a good mechanism no that was not a part of the conversation there we go. but what I do want to touch on which was a part of that conversation and has been in the wider public is the position that has been put forward uh, by our current foreign minister and several others when speaking, and that is the certainty mm -hmm. that is spoken of yes. in terms of the soundness of mm -hmm. our case if we are to go to the ICG. Now, Senator Courtney was very clear in saying no lawyer <laughs> would do such a thing, but you have also said in previous yes. uh, interviews well, five that, lawyers that, did, actually. That, <laughs> and that quite a few more. It is difficult for Belizeans to see the ICJ as a court. Correct. And without, without putting the context of what our domestic yes. courts are yes. like. Yes. And so where many times people feel they've been denied justice, they're fearful of being denied justice Again. at the ICJ. Yes. But as a lawyer, you meet with your client. Yes you would, I would imagine, outline the risks in any decision Absolutely. that are taken. So is it right to tell people that there is a foolproof, this, the, the, the declaration <laughs> says we are entirely certain that there is no likelihood of Belize losing any territory, whether terrestrial or maritime. Is it fair to tell Belizeans? Yes, that? it is, if you're, if you're convinced of this. Mm -hmm. If you are convinced of it, it is fair. Because what you are looking at is whatever we should have and we are entitled to, we are not going to lose that. I look at the UNCLOS rules and I keep saying to people, you do realize that, for instance, the Sarstoon is internal waters. You do realize that our geography means that there isn't 12 miles in southern Belize, even yeah. if you change your law, there isn't 12 miles. Yeah, if you get the map you up, will we go, explain You that. will go to UNCLOS rules. What I am saying to you is Mr. Courtney's, Senator Courtney's opinion notwithstanding, there are not only five lawyers that have said this. There are lawyers on top of lawyers that have said this, lawyers with more expertise than we have, including Sir Elihu Lotopak, mm -hmm. recently deceased, who everybody will tell you is the preeminent expert on this. Men like Shabtai Rosen, who Asad Shoman spoke of, mm -hmm. men like Victor Orrego Vicuña, all those people who had given us legal opinions. I don't have a problem with us getting another opinion, you know. Me want as much okay. opinion as I could get, but, but. That's what we're talking yes, about. Yes, correct. Yeah. But when you are told very clearly, this is the case and these are the reasons why and we've done a study of all the cases of the ICJ. These are the principles on which they rule, okay? It is open to lawyers to be able to say, we are entirely certain that we will not lose territory, maritime or terrestrial, that belongs to Belize. That's fair. That so was in fairness, one of the what are the risks? What there are the risks? There must be of risks involved in taking the case to the ICJ. In terms of risks, you're asking me to look at a what if that mm -hmm. I am not convinced that is significant in terms of what the legal principles are and what the facts are in this case. So I am not a good person to ask. Ask someone who has made a study of this for them to tell you what those risks are and I'll take those on board, listen to them go do my homework, go talk to the experts. Because believe you me, in the years that we have involved in this, we have thrown every single question that you could think of mm -hmm. at our legal experts and the answer has come back the same. And not only our experts, Guatemala's experts have said exactly the same thing. You wanna talk about foreign ministers? At least two other foreign ministers that I know of, one being Gert Rosenthal, mm -hmm. The other one being um, the elder Via Gran Kramer. Mm -hmm. Via Gran Kramer was an early proponent of going to the ICJ. Mm -hmm. Of course, he wanted to go on equity and fairness. Yeah. 
And Rosenthal has said on camera that it is the way to remove it from their constitution. Rosenthal is an accomplished lawyer, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's not just say this is anybody. The legal opinions, the written legal opinions that they've gotten, we have gotten our hands on. We have looked at them. And they all say the same thing. What are we waiting for? Fear. Fear will always be with us. The thing to do is to look at our fear, see what it is based on, and see whether we can overcome it. Because if we can never overcome our fear, we will never resolve this situation. That's my view. Okay. Well, Lisa, thank you for coming in and having this conversation. We're completely out of time, but we appreciate you. And uh, I hope we have more of it heading up in the days towards. Of course we will. Absolutely. I'm will. ready and willing. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking to the International Organization for Migration. So stay tuned.